Please like and subscribe to this channel and press the bell icon to get new video updates. The current rollout of the 5G mobile network should bring about 100 megabits per second of bandwidth to your cell phone. But in the early 1960s, telecom bandwidth was limited and expensive. An international telephone call, inflation adjusted to 2022, cost the equivalent of $100 for the first three minutes. The telephone network of early 1965 was primarily an analog network. There were only about 3,000 1.55 megabit per second digital T1 trunk lines in inter-office service, each with a capacity of 24 simultaneous telephone calls. Back then, most long-distance voice communication was over the American Telephone and Telegraph Company's analog microwave radio and analog cable networks, but AT&T was beginning experiments with high-speed digital networking. The goal was to develop equipment for a digital toll-grade long-haul system capable of transmitting television and frequency division multiplexed 600-channel telephone master groups. In order to do this, Bell Telephone Labs embarked on the development of an experimental 224 megabit per second analog-to-digital converter. Although Bell Telephone Labs had developed the transistor in 1947 and the technology of solid-state electronics was improving rapidly, in the early 1960s, the only guaranteed way to build a 9-bit analog-to-digital converter that would operate at 12 million samples per second was to improve upon a vacuum tube developed at Bell Labs in 1947, known as a pulse code modulation, or PCM coding tube. The design of this 1947 PCM coding tube was similar to a conventional cathode ray tube, but in place of a phosphor screen, there was a code plate that was punched with a 7-bit binary code. This binary code was organized bitwise in the x-axis, and word-wise in the y-axis. A single output electrode behind the code plate collected the electrons that passed through the apertures in the code plate. The electron beam was scanned in two axes, with the y-axis representing the value of the analog signal and the x-axis representing the bit position. This scanning created a serial digital bitstream output representation of the analog input signal. But this serial analog-to-digital converter design was too slow for the proposed 224 megabit per second converter of 1965. So the PCM tube was redesigned to flash convert an entire 9-bit word at once, and the serialization of this 9-bit word into a bitstream would be handled downstream by additional circuitry. The construction of the improved PCM tube is shown in this illustration. A triode electron gun generates a ribbon-shaped beam about one half inch wide. An electrostatic objective lens system focuses the beam to an average thickness of two one-thousandths of an inch. A pair of tilt-compensating electrodes adjust the rotational angle of the beam by the application of an external correction voltage. The analog sample is applied to a pair of vertical deflection plates to direct the beam to a corresponding code position on the code plate. On leaving the deflection plates, the electron beam travels through a beam shield in order to isolate the beam from any distorting external electrostatic forces. The code plate is perforated with nine vertical columns of apertures. The pattern of apertures in each column represents a digit position in a nine-digit gray code. That portion of the beam, which intersects the code plate at an aperture position in a particular column, penetrates to the target block and generates secondary electrons, which are picked up by the nine output electrodes, one electrode for each bit position. The accuracy of the analog to digital conversion would be adversely affected by imperfections in the electron beam. Beam thickness, uniformity of current density distribution across the width of the beam, the beam shape, and its horizontal orientation are critical characteristics that need to be carefully controlled. The electron beam intersection with the code plate forms a line, which should be precisely at right angles to the aperture columns. Any deviation from this angle is tilt. Tilt can be corrected by applying an external bias voltage to the tilt correction electrodes. At each y-axis transition between adjacent code words, there exists a narrow region in the input signal range when errors are possible in those digits that undergo a change from 0 to 1 or 1 to 0. A code which has the property that only one digit is changing at the transition between any two adjacent code words reduces transition errors to one quantum step, in this case, one part in 512. For this reason, the gray code, developed by Frank Gray at Bell Telephone Labs, was chosen over the straight binary code. 
The PCM tube was the only vacuum tube in this experimental high-speed A to D converter. All of the additional circuitry was solid state. During testing, the performance of the PCM tube was excellent, achieving a peak signal-to-noise ratio that was only 2 dB below the theoretical maximum. But the results of a concurrent project to create an experimental, all-solid-state, analog-to-digital converter were almost as good. Neither of these experimental devices went into immediate service for the lack of a high-speed network. AT&T was convinced that underground millimeter waveguides would provide the transmission capability for a high-speed network, and in 1977 developed the WT4 system, which operated at 274 megabits per second using circular waveguides. But developments in low-cost optical fiber networks made the high-cost WT4 system impractical. True high-speed digital networking would finally be achieved over optical fiber networks in the early 1980s. By then, vacuum tube coders were a nearly forgotten historical footnote. But engineering has always been about using available technology to build the best possible solutions, and all technology was once new technology.